We're Trent and Allie, and we've been taking on a lot of projects lately. But this is our biggest one yet. Building a tiny house in the mountains at 8,000 feet elevation. I can barely build a chicken coop, guys. <laughs> <laughs> it's not going to be easy, and we have a lot to do before the snow arrives. Push, push. Okay, toss it. Oh my god. Look at that. We're stronger already. I'm not friends with you right now. <laughs> <laughs> After a year of planning, we're heading up to the property to meet the excavator. It looks like a freaking war zone. Look at this. There's no turning back now. Come along today as we break ground on our biggest challenge yet. And if you're enjoying the videos, be sure to subscribe. It's free and it's the easiest way to help us out. got our coffee now. We've got a long drive to do today and then we've got some hard work. I'm sure you guys probably already know by the title of this video. We're heading up to the land. Good morning, Arco. Good morning, how are you? Oh so get off of there! No! Go outside! That is not dog food. That is not dog food. Go! We actually got a lot of comments in a pretty recent video about Oso and how he doesn't look like a puppy anymore. And you're absolutely right. He doesn't look like a puppy. He's absolutely huge. He's beginning to shed a lot, but he is still very much a puppy and very much rambunctious and destructive and a pain in the little butt or two. How you doing, Frank? <gasps> oh, yes, it's a Frank boy. It's a Frank boy. You guys probably don't know this, but it's about a two and a half hour drive from my mom's house to our property, which isn't the end of the world. We'll still be going back to my mom's house to help with the animals and check on her and help her with things around the house occasionally. This long two and a half hour drive, we've done it probably like 10 times at least in the past month, and I cannot wait for us to drag Terry up there so that we do not have to make this drive anymore. There's nothing better than living on a job site when you can wake up, walk out your front door, and you're there ready to do work. There's no commute. This commute is getting really old. <laughs> <laughs> At least it is a really beautiful drive. We get to drive through the canyons, through the mountains, all the way across Utah practically. Once we get there, we'll be primed and ready to go. For now though, I'm just uh, I'm still waking up. <laughs> Leaving this place, the sun's about to break. Y'all riding shotgun. The feeling we chase, I'm wide awake. Take me away now. So it's really funny, every time we tell people that we're getting ready to build this tiny house or that we're doing construction or that we're building a house ourselves, we get a lot of advice from all different kinds of people. One thing that a lot of people keep saying to us is expect it to take twice as long and to cost twice as much. Now, I don't know if twice as long and twice as much is always going to be the accurate measurement that we should take on. but. I have come to realize that everything we've planned for up until this point has not happened on time. <laughs> We're trying to keep a nice tight schedule and having to rely on other people makes that very difficult. For instance, we're going up to meet the excavator today. It's Monday. He was scheduled to be there two Mondays ago and then it got pushed back and then it got pushed back. I have no idea if he's actually going to be at the property or not but I got my fingers crossed. So basically what you're saying is we could be making this huge two and a half hour drive at 5.30 in the morning to meet nobody at yeah. our property. Yeah. <laughs> at least we could go check the time-lapse cameras and maybe see if there's any moose that have wandered through. Oh, cool. When we were up there last time cutting down the trees, our next door neighbors or our future next door neighbors stopped by and chatted with us for a little bit. And they said that there was moose walking through our property like two days before. So there's definitely large, large animals 
consistently trailing through our property and hopefully once we build the house they'll still come trailing through because I like to see them I want to see them it's cool though can we stay here for a week or so just watch the corn grow in the fields oh I see something green and it looks like an excavator baby <laughs> Woo! and it's already up on the property he's already ready to go Oh, I see a truck too. There's people oh. here. Wow, this is so cool. Where are you going? Oh, you know. <laughs> Isn't this the American dream? <laughs> How are you doing? Excavators up here. Yeah, I'm good. How are you guys? Good. It's good to see you. I'll stay here for as long as I can. Through the storms and through the calm. <laughs> or once fires. We, once we start framing this, it's just going to be For sure dry. there's going to be no rain. Yeah. <laughs> Number one thing that I'm like the most nervous about is like once I build this second story wall, I can build, I could build this wall and lay it down and stand it up with a forklift. And I feel like I would feel more comfortable laying it out and doing everything on the floor. But there's no way I can lay this out because it would be laid out underneath this second story floor system that would Unless already. Unless you built it first and just stand it up by itself, I would be too scared to do <laughs> So we've done a lot of this planning ourselves, but really we don't have a lot of expertise. So the man of the hour, really the man of the year is Kevin here. He's got a lot of experience, years of building houses. He knows this area well, and he knows how crazy we are. Kevin's our Sherpa. He's going <laughs> to be answering some of the questions and helping guide us. Allie and myself are we're giving it a good honest go. We're gonna try and frame the entire thing ourselves. We're obviously gonna have a hand here from a handful of different people, but Kevin is gonna be the reservoir of knowledge. Thank you, Kevin. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> we'll do the best we can to walk you through anything and everything, all the questions, all the problems, all the issues, and at the end of the day, you'll have a quality product. All right, guys, the excavator just showed up, or the operator of the excavator. The excavator's been here for a few days. He just showed up. He's getting ready to start breaking ground. I guess he kind of already broke ground because he like pushed the excavator up here and knocked down a couple trees. But we're about to get to work. Well guys, this right here is the beginning of our driveway. It's gonna go up this way where we're gonna park the truck and the car and the trailer and everything. This is breaking ground. Super excited. I'm just like giddy, I don't know what to say. So it's taken us a year from the time we actually purchased this tiny little plot up in the mountains to when we're actually breaking ground. All of the design process, the conference calls, the building permits, the architecture had to be planned out ahead of time. And we've been, we've been very excited to finally break ground. It's incredible to me that this day is actually happening because after a year, you start to think, I don't know if this will even actually become a thing. We're just planning it forever, it feels like. Now that it's actually happening, I'm really excited to be here. We're helping everybody out as much as we can until we take over the project fully ourselves. Trent is helping set up the silt fence and providing all the moral support, but I'm about to put the camera down and get my hands dirty as well. My dear, you're looking a little thirsty. Uh, dying out here. You wanna trade? Woo! I just need an extra set of lungs. <laughs> than it looks, I'm not gonna lie. That a girl. Not really a morning person, 
but we're making things happen today. Waking up at 5.30, driving for a few hours, working our butts off as soon as we've gotten here. I'm definitely exhausted, but I planned ahead and I brought some Four Sigmatic coffee with me for a little mid-morning pick-me-up. Four Sigmatic is the sponsor of today's video and they believe in harnessing the power of functional mushrooms like chaga, reishi, cordyceps, lion's mane to help us lead healthier, more enhanced lives. They make drinking mushrooms and superfoods easy and delicious and all their products are organic, vegan, and gluten-free. I have been loving their ground coffee. It's made with 100% organic fair trade Arabica coffee beans, and it has lion's mane and chaga functional mushrooms in it. The lion's mane supports brain health, productivity, and focus, and the chaga supports your immune system. I don't get regular coffee jitters from the caffeine the way I would with regular coffee, and it doesn't taste like mushrooms at all. It's nice because it picks me up during the day, and I know that it's healthy. All of Four Sigmatic's products are very affordable, and the site is really easy to navigate. You can sort by things like type of mushroom and the benefits you're looking for. If you guys would like to pick up some Four Sigmatic products of your own, especially the Grand Coffee, which I highly recommend, click our link in the description. You'll get 15% off and free shipping on orders of $100 or more. Thanks again to Four Sigmatic for sponsoring today's video. I'm gonna finish this coffee and then I think break time is over. And <laughs> we got our camp chair set up. We got our homemade lunch from last night, which is leftover sandwiches. Some of my favorite cookies in the world. I know you guys think that butter cookies are my favorite cookie in the world, and that's just not true. Butter cookies are my favorite manufactured cookie that you can find all over the world. However, pumpkin chocolate chip cookies, my number one favorite of all time. They're basically like a cake cookie with chocolate chips. I don't even like pumpkin pie. I just love pumpkin chocolate chip cookies. Absolute favorite. I will eat this entire thing while we sit right here after I eat a sandwich. I will not let you do that. <laughs> I don't think we brought enough water for today. I don't know if we brought enough food, but I know it's time for lunch. I need to get some sustenance in my body. Two cups of coffee was just not enough for the day. I need. I need more. I feel great. I had some Four Sigmatic coffee. I'm ready to go. We're going to eat this lunch, refuel our bodies, because after lunch we have to do some heavy lifting with a few more logs that need to be rearranged on the property. All right, well, we are not done for the day. We packed up our camp chairs. We're done eating lunch. We told the excavator we're running down to find a restroom. I need to find a bathroom. So we're going to head down and see if we can't find a bathroom. Hopefully there's one close by. So our property is on this really cool mountain. There's a couple other cabins around, but other than that, it's just all dirt roads and everything looks the same. And Trent needed to find a bathroom, stat. And luckily there was some construction going on that we found that was deserted and a porta potty that he could jump into really quickly. But now we can't find our way back to our property. I'm lost. <laughs> Trent was like, oh, I know a shortcut. Let's take this road. We have no idea where we are. It's a mountain community, okay? There's a lot of houses and a lot of roads. Some of them are more treacherous than others, and we're lost. But we have a little bit of service, so I found a map, and now I know where we are. Okay. Carry on. Luckily, the cell signal is pretty in and out, so if you don't get it in one spot, you move 100 feet, and it's pretty likely that you're going to find some. But the roads, man, the roads are so bumpy. This is like being back in South America. No, these roads are better than South America for <laughs> sure. <laughs> okay, never mind. We found it. We kind of know where we are. We've been up here a lot, but like it's been snowing or it was a year ago. So we're still trying to get to know the area a little bit, but uh, we have work to do. We're fueled. We've gone to the bathroom. We're gonna go up to some of the trees that have been toppled over, start cutting them into pieces, moving those logs to the back of the property while Curtis gets busy with the excavator. Okay. Ah, oh, jeez Louise. Whoa, where was your countdown? Oh. I can do this. Yeah. Okay. Whose idea was that? What? Stack all the logs against the dead tree. That would be your idea. Oh, really? You're so strong, Trent. All right. Three down, 300 to go. Let's do this. Welcome to the party. I 
One, two, three. Yeah, this one's just like shutting off the blood flow to my brain. Okay, one, two, three, go. That was a big bet. Try being we crazy. <laughs> <laughs> All I'm saying is the stack of logs is there. We made it to here. We're not gonna get any stronger by doing things that we can do. We have to do the things we can't do in order to build the, the macho strength. One more heave ho. We'll throw it over the top like, of these little Quakers. So heavy. It's all right. You can do a granny toss. A granny toss? Yeah. A throw? Yeah. <sighs> Got it? Oh. Don't throw it. Just walk it through these trees. Push, push, push. Okay, toss it. Oh my God. Look at that. We're stronger already. I'm not friends with you right now. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, what we should be doing is carrying that back to where we found it and then bringing it back over here like four or five times and getting some reps in. We'll just find new ones. <laughs> a lot of you probably think that I'm giving Allie a really hard time and I am, but Allie's gonna be probably the only person up here helping me when we're gonna be lifting heavy things, doing strenuous work, repetitive work, just hard work overall. We gotta make sure she's conditioned. I got this, guys. <laughs> Don't worry. <laughs> All right, guys, you can probably hear the truck of our excavator. He has taken off for the day. He has done a bang up job. He's got the grade set on most of the driveway. This is gonna be our driveway. It's gonna come up this way and it's gonna terminate into a nice big parking lot right here. And then, <laughs> this is structure number two. It looks massive. It looks really big. It's not that big. It's because they have to have a lot of room so they can set up concrete forms and all kinds of stuff. This is the depth that they're going to be setting all of the footings and then they're going to be pouring concrete for building number two. Building number one. It's not there. Is our house and nothing has been done yet, but <laughs> that is going to happen tomorrow. Seriously, this has been such a magical day to watch the property turn in from what it was this morning into what it is now. Huge transformation. It's <laughs> almost scary how fast everything's happening. Yeah. And I think the concrete guys are gonna be here probably within a couple weeks. Wow. And that's probably gonna go super quick. And then we have to pick up the job. So one, we gotta get Terry ready. We gotta get Terry finished. That's true. Two, I gotta take those plans home and study. <laughs> also, I need bug spray. <laughs> but day one of uh, excavation, I think huge success. Breaking ground complete. That was incredible! Wow, guys! Did you see the little baby moose? Oh. oh my gosh! That's across the street from our house, just in case you guys were wondering. There's a mama and a baby moose just hanging out like 40 yards from our front door. You guys, that was a mama moose, not even full-size big bull moose, and she was bigger than a horse. Moose are enormous, and her baby was probably the size of a small horse. <laughs> that is crazy. That was seriously unreal. Oh my gosh. I can't wait to get back up here tomorrow to start building our house. <laughs> I'm so excited. Babe, can you believe that this is where we are? I cannot. Also, I can't believe how hot it is up here. I thought it was gonna be cold all the time. I know. It's not, it's hot. Anyway, I hope you guys had an awesome time coming along on today's adventure. We'll see you in the morning. Thank you.
spared you the two and a half hour drive up to our property. Now we are about to approach and we are gonna start digging the house today. Well, I'm so excited. You are full of energy <laughs> this morning. It's like one thing to have them like dig out the secondary structure, which is gonna be really cool, but it's just not as big of a deal as the house. Today, or by the end of today, we should be able to stand in the bottom of what will eventually be our basement. <laughs> I'm really excited That's about so that. That's so cool. <laughs> it's been a really nice morning, easy drive. It's hard to wake up early, but the roads are super clear. So we made it up here nice and fast. It's hard though driving and like doing all this stuff without Frank. When we're in the van, the van is very well insulated. There's lots of windows for constant ventilation. Frank comes everywhere with us. In a, in a truck or any other type of car, you can't have an animal with you all the time because if you have to park and go in somewhere or leave that animal in your vehicle, it's really dangerous. Kids, animals, they could die. It's not the same as the van at all. So Frank stays at home. We're excited for when we can pull Terry up to the property and have Frank with us all the time, just like the old days, because that's our preference really is having Frank with us all the time. But um, it's been a big adjustment having to leave him at home when we're in the truck because it just wouldn't be safe to take him everywhere with us. And also, he's never been around an excavator or any type of heavy machinery, and if we had him up here at the property, yeah, he could just run around, but also he could get smashed or killed or run out into the road. Anything could happen, and he's just not used to this property, so while there's heavy machinery moving around, he's not coming up. Once the uh, excavator's done, we might let him come up and roam around a little bit. Yeah, play with the moose. Yeah, also there's baby moose and mama moose and the mama moose could try to attack Frank if he gets anywhere near the moose, so. <laughs> he's smarter than that. Yeah, and maybe he's like fast enough. He could probably get away from a moose, but <laughs> we don't, we don't want to put Frank in danger. So for now, he stays back and keeps the other dogs company. We are back on the job site. Everything is going smoothly. Now this morning, or yesterday, we showed you guys where the secondary structure was going to be dug out, where the foundation was gonna be poured. This morning, they marked the actual corners. Right here is going to be the end of the building, which means all this over here will be nice auxiliary parking. Because we're gonna have some special vehicles that are gonna to need to be parked here that are going to help us survive at this altitude in the winter time and that's where they're going to be parked as well as terry also i think terry's actually going to live there so these guys have actually gotten to work this morning we just barely showed up maybe an hour ago we just barely went back and got the camera so that we could show you guys what's going on the excavator has moved to this side of the property he is excavating where the foundation for the house is going to go it's crazy isn't that, isn't that crazy yeah that's pretty wild <laughs> I never expected to be on a job site helping out with construction. Definitely not the way I thought my life was going to unfold, but it's honestly such a blessing and I'm so grateful for this opportunity. It's been really fun to design our dream and see it actually come to life. <sighs> and today is just the beginning. <laughs> Well guys, we really wanted to live in the mountains. That's why we're here. However, as we're starting to excavate and get ready to build this house, things like erosion, water runoff, snow, grade, all these things are becoming a huge pain in the butt. Come here. So we're running into a little bit of an issue here. 
our secondary structure has this big wall behind it. Now, we have to have an engineered wall if it's a retaining wall over four feet, which is really expensive, a lot more difficult, takes a lot more time, has to be inspected, has to have a permit of its own. We don't want to do that, so we're having to try and come up with really creative solutions to only do a four foot boulder retaining wall. There's a bunch of different options that we could take, and this is our first time doing this, so we have no idea what to do. We're trying to trust the contractors. We're gonna make the best decision that we can, and hopefully it's not one that we regret. But these guys are doing an awesome job, and I'm glad that we have them on our side. Because if I was doing this by myself, and I was driving the excavator, we would already be up the creek without a paddle. <laughs> How many mountains to get some confidence? How many debates to earn some tailwind? Years pass, I'm still the same. What will it take? Why the way? It has been a long day here. Things have been so crazy. One thing that's really weird, topsoil, clay. The clay is what's below the topsoil and that is what's coming out from basically underneath where the basement is gonna go. It looks like a freaking war zone. Look at this. Like clay, topsoil, brush, trees, everything. Wow. Our new swimming pool. Yes. Oh my gosh, Trent. Where are you right now? I'm uh, I'm below the bathroom. You're below the bathroom? The bathroom's gonna be right here. <laughs> and now I'm below the kitchen. Hey, it's pretty cool. We've been doing a lot of work up here. Well, Curtis has been doing a lot of work in the excavator. In the next couple days, they're gonna finish digging out the entire basement. They're gonna start hooking everything up, getting the concrete poured, so excited to get to take over and start doing our portion of the job because right now we're basically just watching and like helping move logs but it's a waiting game these guys are making quick work they're gonna have this thing ready for terry to be delivered in probably a couple weeks which means we got to get terry completely finished but at least for now trent can provide the comic relief with that ridiculously upturned sun hat you don't like it <laughs> i mean it's doing its job it's good like it blocks the sun most of the way like this, but now that the sun's starting to get into the later hours of the day, I gotta flip it down. It's like you're trying to be a cowboy, but it's not the right hat when Just, it's flipped up. When I'm thirsty, I do this and then it catches rain. <laughs> there it is. And I can take it off and drink it. <laughs> but we hope that you guys had a fun time coming along on today's adventure, breaking ground, building a swimming pool. <laughs> not really. <laughs> digging out the foundation. It's been a very busy 48 hours and we're honestly just getting started. I still cannot believe how much progress has happened since yesterday morning. Hopefully we can maintain this momentum and things can continue to move quickly. Got uh, our fingers crossed. We got our fingers crossed. But in the meantime, we got a lot of work to do. <laughs> Make sure you guys show us if you enjoyed this video by giving us a big thumbs up on this video. Subscribe to Trent and Alley and click the notification bell so that you guys get notified every time we post a video because this project's gonna start moving really quickly. <laughs> Thanks again to Four Sigmatic for sponsoring today's video. Please click the link in our description to take advantage of their deal. And we'll see you guys on the next one. Adios. You wanna slap the screen? <laughs>